Uh, joining us now, Democratic Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy of Illinois. He's a member of both the Intelligence and Oversight Committees. Congressman, thanks so much uh, for joining us. And as you know, we have a lot to discuss, but let me get question to the president's statement this afternoon that his administration will no longer deal with the United Kingdom's ambassador to the United States after the, the leaks of those messages, those cables uh, to uh, London, uh, in which the ambassador called the Trump administration inept and clumsy. Well, you know, as a member of the Intelligence Committee, um, it's become clear to me that we need to be close with our allies and we need to hold our adversaries at bay. And one of the most troubling aspects of the Trump administration's foreign policy is that we push away our allies and sometimes we cozy up to our adversaries like Russia and so forth. In this particular instance, um, I do think that uh, it's troubling, to say the least, uh, that the U.K. ambassador would have these views uh, of the Trump administration. One um, uh, part of the excerpts of the cables that I read that uh, caught my attention is that the ambassador from the U.K. said, uh, the worst cannot be ruled out with regard to the Trump administration's possible collusion with the Russians or Donald Trump's collusion with the Russians, which really bothered me. And so um, I think at this point, uh, we should probably return to uh, uh, Diplomacy 101 and, and, and try to repair the breach and try to bring the uh, government of uh, the United Kingdom closer to us rather than pushing them away. Yeah, I know the ambassador, uh, and he had enormous, uh, has enormous a national security foreign policy experience. Yes. That's why the British government sent him to Washington to begin, to begin with. Uh, let's move on and discuss the president's continued efforts now to include this very sensitive citizenship question on the 2020 U.S. Census, despite a significant setback from the U.S. Supreme Court, which rejected the administration's rationale last month. Uh, at this point, uh, do you believe there is any legal pathway that would allow the administration to include this question on the census, which is going forward right now? No. Um, and thanks to the leadership of Chairman Cummings on the Oversight Committee, we got to the bottom of why they actually added the citizenship question to the census, which is that uh, they wanted to suppress the count of minorities. And the offered reason, namely that they, uh, quote unquote, wanted to enforce the Voting Rights Act provision by adding the citizenship question, was clearly shown to be pretextual. And that is what the Supreme Court found. At this point, any move to issue an executive order or something along those lines to put that citizenship question back on the census, in my opinion, would be unconstitutional. And in any case, we should remember there's a trial that is about to unfold in Maryland if the Trump administration continues with the litigation, and I'm convinced that that trial will show the true discriminatory intent behind putting the citizenship question on the census, if that's the way they want to proceed. As you heard in our report, the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says the push for the citizenship question is an attempt, in her words, to make America white again. Do you agree with the Speaker's suggestion that this is all racially motivated? Well, I, I would actually um, go back to the um, information that the Republican gerrymandering specialist uh, was, um, he conceived of, conceived of in uh, recommending to the Trump administration in adding the citizenship question to the census, which is that he thought that it would help with Republican gerrymandering efforts uh, for as far as the eye could see. Um, and, and, and I think that that is... Uh, potentially a, a reason for adding the citizenship question. In any case, suppressing the count of minorities and others um, is illegal, unconstitutional, and I think that uh, um, it goes against the spirit of what the Constitution commands, which is that every person has to be counted, regardless of whether they're a citizen and regardless of whether they vote, for instance, children and others. Speaker Pelosi also reiterated her threat to hold a contempt vote on the House floor against members of the Trump administration over this issue. You sit, uh, as we know, on the Oversight Committee, which already voted to hold the Attorney General, the Commerce mm -hmm. Secretary, in contempt for not complying with subpoenas. Should Speaker Pelosi make good on her, uh, on her mo most recent threat? Um, potentially, yes. I think that we'll have to see in the next day or two what the Trump administration does uh, with regard to the census. But at this point, I think that any attempt to put the citizenship question on the census, even at the time that, by the way, millions of these forms are being printed without the citizenship question, 
uh, would be illegal and unconstitutional, Wolf. You, you also sit on the Intelligence Committee, and as you know, uh, the former uh, Special Counsel Robert Mueller is scheduled to testify publicly in front of your committee uh, uh, next week, in front of the Judiciary Committee next week, as well uh, this afternoon. The Attorney General Bill Barr called the subpoena for Mueller an attempt to create some kind of public spectacle. How do you respond to that criticism from the Attorney General? <laughs> well, I, I definitely think there's going to be tremendous interest in what uh, Mr. Mueller has to say. I think there's going to be a Super Bowl-sized audience for what Mr. Mueller uh, uh, testifies to with regard to his report. I think this is our first chance to hear from him directly uh, what, is, uh, what, is a, what is the contents of the report and to answer a number of questions about it. I think um, there will be intense public interest. Let, let me get your uh, reaction also to the latest developments involving Iran. And it's claimed that, uh, uh, that they, they, they're going to breach the uranium enrichment limits set by the 2015 nuclear deal that the Obama administration put together with the European allies, among others. How worried should we all be about this latest escalation in tension between the U.S. and Iran? Uh, we, should be, we should absolutely be worried. Um, I think at this point... Uh, the Iranians should not go beyond the limits that were set in the agreement. Um, I don't see how that could possibly help them with uh, the economic misery they find themselves in. That being said, at this point, we should work with our allies and others in the region who want to see Iran uh, basically abandon uh, a nuclear weapon. And we have to get away from that children's game of operator uh, where we basically talk to Iran through intermediaries and thereby send potentially confusing signals to them and potentially uh, uh, signals that could lead to miscalculation by them or us. I think we should speak directly to them, make it clear what our demands are. We should come back to the table and we should hash out another agreement ASAP. There's no appetite for war, Wolf, um, among my constituents or anybody else that I talk to. And yet if we go down the path of escalating uh, um, uh, rhetoric and other actions, um, then we're going to potentially go to well, armed But very conflict. quickly, Congressman, the president says he's willing to speak directly to the Iranian leadership. It's the Iranian leadership who says as long as these sanctions continue, they're not going to speak to the U.S. Well, I think that uh, uh, there might be ways uh, to communicate with them um, in a way that doesn't involve tweets, uh, which is kind of the extent of what I've seen uh, at this point. And I've seen some ridiculous tweets uh, t uh, on that score. I think at this point, our diplomats, our seasoned professionals should be brought back to the uh, forefront of leading our discussions and actually talking to the Iranians and others and uh, trying to hash out an agreement. We cannot go to war. That's absolutely clear. I and others have included language in the appropriations process, making that clear that we're not going to allow...